everybody. I am at the potting bench. I have all sorts of potting to do today. But first I wanted to kind of share with you a little bit about my methodology. In the spring, I want more, more, more. I want more of everything. I want more potted plants. I want more flowers. I want more shrubs. I want more of everything. Well, now that the temperatures have just skyrocketed, I don't want more of everything anymore. I'm really trying to congregate a bunch of the smaller plants into larger pots. I need to do a lot of upsizing for plants that are in smaller pots that need to go in larger pots, which happily will mean I don't have to water them as much because the larger pots will be able to hold more moisture. So I've got a lot of that going on right now. And let me kind of share with you how I think through the process. Because I don't wanna go out and buy a bunch of larger pots that I don't need. So I find that what this is is kind of staggered planting, or I think of it as domino planting. So let me start out with the very first one that needs to be repotted. So I've got this gorgeous rosemary topiary right here, and you can see this root ball. It's compressed, it needs to be loosened up, and for this plant to thrive, which is so often the problem with topiaries, you get them, they're pot bound, and they need to be repotted. But this one used to be in this pot right here, okay? so. Here's what I mean about the domino effect. So I'll repot this one, and then this one will go in this pot, because this one also needs a larger pot and needs to be upscaled, because I want this to get really large, hopefully for Christmas. Then this little baby one over here is gonna get upscaled into this pot. This pot right here, this double ball rosemary, which started from a little sprig. And on LVTV, we did a deep dive into starting um, rooted cuttings from your own garden and transforming them into topiary. And we really did a deep dive on that, not just a cursory little overview of it. So this is going to be put into this much prettier pot right here. And then this gorgeous, uh, reminds me of an olive urn. I got this from White Flower Farm years ago. It is one of my treasured pots. It too has a double ball rosemary in it, but it's getting a little too confined, so it's going to go in a larger pot. Now, one thing to note is that, let me go back behind here now. One thing to note is that I pay attention to what kind of pots they're going into, not only in terms of size, but also in terms of what kind of pot they are. In other words, terracotta or something that looks like stone, because often I want the groupings of plants, like all of these rosemary plants, to all harmonize with one another. So let me get a couple of these things out of the way so I have a little bit more uh, work surface. And by the way, this juniper is going to get replanted into this pot. So I'm going to move this out of the way. Okay. Now, one thing I always like to have on hand, and I'll put a link to this below, is Osmocote. Osmocote is both for outdoor and indoor plants, and basically it is a long-acting fertilizer. So you can put it in, it really makes a tremendous difference in the health and the growth of the plant. And I always try to incorporate some of this into the new fresh potting soil that I use when I am potting something up. Uh, if you are a new gardener, then this would be a good video for you to watch because I think it's just instructive in terms of one of the most basic planting skills, basic gardening skills, and that is how do you just safely and effectively repot a plant. So number one, as always, I have top dressed this in gravel. So I'm just gonna slough off that gravel. It will fall to the bottom where I've got some broken clay shards for drainage, and that's great. Now I'm gonna take my hands, my thumb, and I am just going to really roughen up this root ball. See how congested that is? So not only 
do these roots grow in a circle and are unable to penetrate the soil. But also, I just watered this yesterday and look at how dry that is. It also then can't hold on to moisture, which does two things. It makes the plant suffer and it makes you a slave to watering. So that's why this time of year, I really noticed that this needs to be done. It would help if I had something, sometimes I'll use a pick or whatever, to kind of liberate those roots. This will make this plant so much happier. And when you buy a topiary that is already in a topiary form, typically this is what it looks like. You'll get it in a pot. It will be so root bound that it, it genuinely and frequently, it, it pretty much really needs to be repotted almost immediately which we seldom do. We plot them in a pretty cash po or whatever, and then we just enjoy them. And I am very guilty of doing that myself, especially around the holidays. But typically, they need to be repotted almost immediately. So I've got that in place there. I'll make it stand up and fly right here momentarily. So I have some potting mix here. And you all always ask, so what kind of potting mix do I use? Well, basically, I never use garden soil. I always use a potting blend. And really, use whatever potting blend you like, as long as it's a good quality potting blend. For me, what that means is when I need some more fresh new dirt, it is a fresh new potting soil, and this is just an all-purpose potting soil. I think this might be Scott's. I'm not as concerned about it being organic, though you can find organic potting soils, because this stuff isn't in the ground. This is just potting soil that's going to go into a pot. And I like the convenience of just being able to purchase whatever potting soil I can easily find, or uh, probably more realistically, what hubs can find, because he, that's how he helps me in the garden. He gets my gravel and he gets my potting soil. So I've got this in place, and all I'm going to do is just basically fill in the surround and kind of tuck it down in there. Now you'll notice that, let me squish that down a little bit, the top of the root ball is just slightly below the rim of the pot. Typically, I like to do about an inch or half an inch. That's so it can accommodate gravel or whatever I'm using to mulch the top of the plant, which also keeps it uh, moist and keeps the moisture in. So I'm just going to tuck that down in here. Now, there's another really cool way that I can show you for potting up and transplanting and upsizing plants, but I'll show you that later. Now, I've got some of this Osmocote, and you can read the directions of approximately how much you put in. But I have found that I really can't, I think, over fertilize it with this because, and some of you may have different experiences, but because this is a slow release. So then I'm mixing it into the surrounding soil. Now at this point, I will often really water it in to get this soil to settle. Um, but because I'm not near my hose, I'll do that. Um, I will do that at another time. I'll water it in really well. So, and always try to make them stand up and fly right. A lot of that can be helped by just where you really tuck in the potting soil. Another thing you can do is if your potting soil is really, really dry, hydrate the potting soil first. In other words, moisten it in your container before you even put it in. Okay, so there you can see that I've got this guy done. It went very, very quickly, smells beautiful. And now 
I have not only a beautiful plant, but one that is much more dramatic, makes much more of an impact because it's in a larger pot. And this time of year, I'm wanting not a lot of small pots, I'm wanting lar more, fewer, larger pots. Okay, so there is number one, and later I'll top dress this with gravel. Why do I top dress with gravel? Uh, because I mostly, I like the way it looks. I like the fact that it keeps squirrels out and it keeps moisture in. And it is so thrilling for me on Instagram, everywhere on YouTube, I see that people are doing the same things. They're starting to mulch their pots with gravel. It's just a wonderful idea and it looks so neat and tidy. And whenever you, this time of year when the garden starts looking really unkept, it's nice to be able to kind of uh, just tidy things up and a way to do that is putting a fresh layer of gravel on your plants. Okay, so that's number one. I'll move it out of the way. Okay, number two, potting on. Isn't this pot pretty? It's a beautiful terracotta pot and I get my pots from everywhere. Um, I am not, I guess, really loyal to any one place. I get them absolutely everywhere. Now, I have in this pot here, I've kind of got some leafy debris and stuff that I'm going to put at the bottom of this pot. A lot of times, instead of drainage, here's something else I do, you guys. Instead of putting like a terracotta broken chard or, or gravel or anything, I'll just take something like this. This is some Akuba japonica leaves that I pruned off and I put those at the bottom and that too will keep the soil in, give me a little additional drainage, but I really want as much depth of growing area as I can get for this. So I'm going to tuck that, that in. It will break down over time, feed the plant, and I can then oil, and it will also kind of squish down and give me room at the top to top dress the plant later on over the years. So this one, as you can see, it's been growing in a rather shallow container, but the diameter of the pot is about the same. So what I'm going to have to do to get it to the level of the top of the pot is just add more soil. Okay, so I'm not paying attention. Stuart, did I already put in some Osmocote? No, okay. So I'm gonna put in a little bit of Osmocote. Stuart's here to keep me honest. Stuart, how long have you and I known each other? Uh, three years, four years. Uh, met through a friend, immediately hit it off. Okay, so here I'm gonna Watch, watch out for flying gravel. I love the sound of gravel. It's one of the reasons, one of the many reasons I love it. In fact, on, I think it was on Instagram, and if you're not following me there, you might want to. I just did a post on my love affair with gravel, and it talks all about why I am so enamored and smitten by gravel. So there you can see I'm loosening up loosening up the root ball a little bit. I'm going to come back in here and one thing you can do if I was nearby my hose I would after I put this surrounding potting soil in I would water it until I started to see air bubbles coming up around the circumference and then when I didn't see air bubbles anymore, then I would know that there were no air pockets. You don't want air pockets be because then there'll be a void and you don't want those roots to start growing into a void and dropping out. Okay, Stuart, you know what? I'm gonna go get some water. Give them a little tour of the potting bench and I'll be right back.
this, you guys, is some water that I've been saving in a bucket because it's rainwater and plants always like rainwater better than tap water. So this guy is not quite straight enough. So this is a real moment of opportunity to get your little guys straight is when you're potting them up. If you drink Folgers coffee, they are just wonderful in the garden for a number of different reasons. In this case, I'm just using it to be able to water my plants. So this one, I've got it packed pretty well. I really don't see any air bubbles coming up, but I'll probably water it till I kind of see anything coming out the bottom. Now another thing you can do to save yourself time, because this is stair-step gardening, after all, or stair-step potting, is sometimes I'll do this, and I'll take what's on top from one pot and just transfer it to the other pot, because this is the rosemary I'm going to repot next. So I don't even have to go to the gravel bin. What I need is to have another filled container with just gravel in it, but I'm kind of surface area challenged here. So, now doesn't that look purdy? Purdy, purdy, purdy. And it will make a nice sibling for the other rosemary that I've already repotted. Okay, so now let's move that guy out of the way. So, Stuart, was that the second one? I'll do one more, because I think you guys are getting the idea. Move this guy. Now, as I said earlier, this one I want to show you, because it's a little bit different. So, I got this. This was one that was already purchased in this form. It was in, I love this Italian terracotta uh, clay. It's beautiful. It was on this wreath form. And by the way, you guys, if you get something like this and the plant ever dies, just take off the dead foliage and the dead vining and then save the ring because it will be invaluable to you later when you start creating your own. Now this cash po, and where did I get this? I think I maybe got this at Michael's several years ago. You'll note it doesn't have drainage. Now I could drill a hole in the bottom, but then that would prevent me from ever using it as a vase or in any way where I wanted it to remain watertight. So I'm not going to do that. The other thing is sometimes, I'm sure if you're a very experienced ceramic driller, it wouldn't be a problem, but I am not. And sometimes when I've tried to do that, I actually crack the container. So an easier solution is to just get a plastic pot that fits in here beautifully beautifully. You can see this fits in here just very easily and use that instead. That way when I water it, I can just take it out and drainage isn't a problem because 99% of the time you always want to have drainage in your containers. A lot of times if you're, uh, when I first started out with houseplants years ago, that was something I didn't realize the importance of drainage. So especially if you're starting out with succulents or some other small plants, house plants, drainage is all important. So I'm going to take this one. I'm going to try to remove it from this pot. And sometimes if you have a hard time extricating it from its container, then I suggest you give it just a little wrap on grass, not on concrete, or you'll break the pot. This one is just a little bit taller than the height of this pot. So I'm going to loosen up the root ball at the bottom. Sometimes I will even completely tear off the root ball at the bottom because what I want it to do is produce new, young, fleshy roots. OK. 
Okay. And you don't really, I don't think you need to be quite as, you just don't need to be all that tender, I don't think when you're potting up plants. I mean, obviously you don't wanna be overly aggressive, but you wanna be aggressive enough so that you get the results you want. So um, it's one of those cases where just the right amount of, of aggression is a good thing. So it's in there. Now I'm just gonna fill it. And again, you guys, I will put a link to this Osmocote. I know you guys are gonna ask me what this plant is, so before I forget, it is Mullenbeckia, M-U-H-L-E-N-B-E-C-K-I-A, also known as angel vine, typically when you're buying it in topiary form from websites, or wire vine. And if you mulch it, it will be hardy outside, though typically, when it gets really cold, I bring this guy in. And I've got some pots that are just nothing but this Muhlenbeckia, and they're beautiful too. It makes, they really can handle both sun and shade. It looks beautiful in a composition planting with some seasonal color or other type of leaf textures. So, this one, unlike these that I mulch in gravel, this one I will either not mulch at all or I might mulch it later with a little bit of moss. Why? Because I don't want, you can tell I know this from experience, when I put it in here, I don't want any of these little rock, uh, these little pebbles to come between the liner and the pot because sometimes they get wedged and it's hard for me to get them out. So, voila, there you go. This would be very pretty, I think. Top dressed with some moss, something pretty. If I wanted to elevate it a little bit more, I could put some plastic down at the bottom or a little bit of newspaper, but it fits into this pot just beautifully. Again, Never waste good garden muck. I always take my dirty garden gloves and rub them across the surface to age the pot. And there you go. Domino planting of potted plants in your late summer garden. Thanks for helping me.